Ospreay, I speak for yourself, says I'm not. And it was funny because I always thought Tony was totally committed. When I used to bring Tony on in ESPN, we'd always talk about nutrition. I literally, the interview would go from football to nutrition. And I remember telling guys on the, off the air, I'd be like, that Tony Gonzalez guy is totally locked in. So let's bring Tony on the show, a 14-time Pro Bowler, Fox NFL analyst. So yesterday, Yay. when you told me, you're like, listen... <laughs> I always thought you were the obsessed, obsessed guy. I, I, yeah. I, I would tell my producer, probably John, I'd be like, I, I love that Gonzalez guy. Tony's, we, we'd always talk nutrition on the yeah, air. Yeah, and yeah. I would always be like, your diet, and because I kind of like that stuff. And then you watch Brady say, I give up my life, and you're like, that guy's crazy. I can't do it. <laughs> How, okay, so let's, let's just pretend there's three levels. Uh -huh. There's Brady. Yep. There's you, which is. Yeah. No. And. So I want you to ask this in a locker. So and then there's a third, which is less than you. Is there a fourth where guys just aren't committed at all? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's guys out there that aren't committed at all. Where and when I say aren't committed, they show up, they do what's asked them of them, and that's it. So yeah, I got my workout. I'll do the workout. Oh, you want me to go out to practice for a couple hours? I'll go practice. I'll pull, I'll go hard, but for the most part, a lot of them aren't going that hard. Okay, so let me ask you this, Tony. So if Tom, let's take the Tom level out. Let's use three levels. Your level, which is not just talent, like you're nutritionally aware, yeah. you work it hard, but you go have cocktails. Yes. The second level is you work it hard, but not Tony hard. And the third level is minimum required. By the way, we just describe most workplaces in America. Yes, most workplaces. Yep. What percentage in, a lo in the locker rooms you're at, give me the percentages of your level, little below and just kind of doing the minimum. I would say I am in the top 2% of the team. Top 2%. Holy gosh. Yeah, top 2%. Only 2% of guys work out like you. Work out, I'm talking the total absolute commitment where they take it home with them, where they're visualizing, they're thinking, they're obsessed That's how about you what are. they're doing. That's how I am. During the season, I would put myself up against anybody in the league Quarterbacks are different because they got to be there all day. They got to know what everybody's doing. They're kind of coaches on the field. They're kind of coaches on the field, so they have to. So you are two percent. Two percent. Okay. What's the next level? Next level is I'd say thirty percent of the locker room. Holy hell! Thirty percent. Tony, you're telling me that sixty-eight percent of the NFL guys, whatever's minimum required. Minimum required. Wow. And I think that's the coach's responsibility. Those are the reasons. Wow. Those guys are the reason that I got to listen to a motivational speech every week uh, on trying to get these guys committed, trying to get them to buy in to what they're capable of doing mentally, physically, get your work out, go to bed on time. Hey, guys, we got a tough challenge this week. The pros like Tom and like myself, especially, you know, the last 10 years of my career, it's like, that was a part of the reason why I wanted, I couldn't handle it anymore. Like, I can't handle another motivational speech. Why? I don't believe in mo <laughs> Layla, I just want to come in and practice and go dominate. That's what I want to do. I want to show up and play, but you Tony, can't do that. I, didn't it tick you off? Yes. 68% of your locker room wasn't putting in extra time. It, it, it jade you out. It, uh, there was a time where, and, and I'm sure some of my teammates, they're, they're, they're probably like, he wasn't that nice. Like, he's not really a sociable guy because I'd be so upset. Like, some guys, you, you hear them, too. They're in the street, running the streets. They're out there drinking. They're staying out late. They're, they're chasing girls. They're just, it's like, and this is before the game. This is on, on Thursday, Friday, you know, sometimes even Saturday night. And we got a game. And then you wonder why we got our butts kicked. So it's, it's hard, especially uh, and this is why New England is so great. First of all, you're, you're Tom Brady's doing it. Everybody else is going to fall there's right a, in there's line. There's a guilt. Like, I got to work it. it got, he, it, you're like, if he's doing it and then the coach expects it, coach doesn't let that slip, you're not going to be that type of guy and stay a New England Patriot for too long. Uh, everybody buys into what he, uh, what Belichick is saying. And I think, I think that's a big reason why they have that secret sauce, that and, and ego, getting rid of their they, – they, they have the owner has no ego, the coach has no ego. The, the, I, and Tom I, has no ego. I, I am just, it, to me, it is absolutely. You're shocked by this. I this cannot, is normal stuff, though. This is, this is workplaces in America. Can you imagine the average person listening? So the average person listening, I'm just going to say, makes 42000 a year. Mm -hmm. If you were big enough to play NFL football, I believe that a huge percentage of my audience would give their left arm to play a professional sport. Uh -huh. The fact that, and, and I believe you totally, because I covered, the last locker room I covered was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And it, well, there was a laissez-faire kind of, there were two or three guys, Hardy Nickerson, uh -huh. like you, we went to Cal. Hardy was all in. All in. All in, intellectually, physically, 
And it was always funny. When I interviewed Hardy, I was always like, he's kind of harsh. Now I know why. Yeah, he's relentless. That's and, why. But, but he's also, like you, getting tired of uh. junk. So the last team you were on, though, was Atlanta. Yeah. They were pretty good. Good. Yeah, and, and Coach got – that's what, that's where the head coach is so important, getting these guys to buy into that culture, to buy into that system. And for me, during the season, it seems like a no-brainer to me, and that's what I would do. This is what I say with Tom. He carries this into the offseason, too. That's where I did not carry it. I'm not staying out in Kansas City during the offseason, even go? though they got OTAs <laughs> and they got workouts with my team. I, I couldn't do that. So you worked out by yourself in Huntington Beach? I worked out by Beach. myself at home, and I traveled around the world. I, I, I felt like that, was, that, to me, was more important. But during the season, I, I put myself up against Tom. Like I was just as committed as him during the season, but where he takes it to a whole new level is during that offseason, yeah. which I'm not willing to do. Yeah. You like to go out and have a good time. I like to go out and have a good time. I like to travel the world. I want, I'm not saying Tom doesn't do that. Like, what What do you mean the world? Where's the last place? I'm going to Park City here uh, Friday. Oh, you're going to have That's fun. That's an hour and a half from my world. What's What's the world? Where's the last place in the world you went? Because uh, I know you went. I went to Montana. I went to Yellowstone. Well, yeah, that's not the world. That's just. Uh, Mallorca. Well, Mallorca, Spain last year. You, that's uh, right. You yeah. went to Mallorca, Spain. Got Tokyo coming up. Got, uh, got going him. to Greece, going to Estonia. Oh, wow. Tokyo? Yeah, I got all that stuff, dude. You're very you're global. Park City. <laughs> That's not global, though. That you're kind of you're a you're a traveler guy. I like to travel. You I really like, are. You're very. I always told you, you're very thoughtful. I want to. I think that's the purpose of life. You want to try as many foods as you can. Go to as many countries as you can. If you don't travel, that's like reading one page of a book of a great book. You got to get out. You got to see the world. Have Open you ever gone up. to one of these global places and you're there for like two or three places. days and you're like, yeah, like one of your big global places. What's and the, and you're there the, and you're like, God, I really miss California. This place stinks. No. When's the last time you went to a global place and you didn't love it? I, I haven't been to one oh, yet. Oh, really? I haven't been to one yet. You've never been to one place. Have and, you? Yeah. Where have you been? That, and then you miss California? I've been Actually, to, I, I bet you did. No, I've been to a couple places where I was like, this, is, this ain't great. Where? You ever been to Calgary? <laughs> That's not global either. If we're going with your global thing, you gotta come on. You go there. You go. You research it before you go didn't too. You I not know like I'm Paris. Have I think you said you didn't like I, Paris. I know. I, I, I most places I go to, I'm fine. This is, I'm boring people. I, you, you're more of a global traveler. I think Utah's global. That's my globe. My globe's a small globe. Get outside you, of America, man. You gotta go. Go down. Go hey, travel. Make America great again. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> America. <laughs> <laughs> Love it or leave it. By the way, here are my elite. I, I believe in any decade in my life, Tony, there have been six to eight elite quarterbacks. Uh -huh. These are the only, and when I say elite, I mean you can give them a shaky O line, average running game, mm -hmm. and they'll win you nine, 10, 11 games. Mm -hmm. Am I missing somebody? And I want you to be tough. Uh, are you missing somebody? I'm, I'm just... Can carry a bad O line. Can just, it's not about. I got the perfect coordinator. I got the perfect receivers. I right. those are the only guy. Brady, Wentz, Breeze, Ben, Rogers, Luck, Wilson. Who am I missing? I'm trying to think right now. Hmm. Uh, I always the, the Rushmore four, which was Tom, Brady, Ben, and, and Aaron. Uh, and I mean Drew. Uh, over elite quarterbacks over the last 10, 15 years. Um, 10 years. Last 10 years? See, people got on me because they said I hadn't seen enough of Carson Wentz, and I'm like, how much do I have to see? Six, five runs, rifle arm, MVP. He is the only one that I wouldn't put on there yet. You I, know, you're, not, you're not convinced he's good. Well, I'm convinced he's good, and he could be on this list, but the hallmark of greatness is consistency. And we haven't seen enough yet. You haven't seen him enough. I mean, he did it for this year. He was MVP caliber this year. Can he, can he sustain that over? Because otherwise, you better put Matt Ryan on there. Oh, God. Or you better put... God. Or you better put uh, Cam uh, um, Cam Newton. Cam Cam Newton. He was MVP two years ago. Yeah, and then he's been in the league nine years. He's had one year. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I got to see more of so Carson you're not, Wentz. So today, if I if you could draft Carson Wentz, you'd be on the fence. No, I wouldn't be on the fence. I'd take I'd take Cam Newton after that MVP year. You take Cam today after, over Carson Wentz. After that MVP year, I would have taken. But now, no, I'm taking Carson Wentz. I think he he's good. He's good. Derek, Derek Carr? What about him? Now, okay. Derek there Carr? you go. That's the one guy I didn't put on. I said Derek Carr is the one. He's on the list, but he fell off. It's like I need to see September. If he and Gruden click in September, I'm back on. I think he's the closest that's not on. I got a feeling he's going to be on that list. So do I. So yeah. do I. He's a good player. All right. His name is uh, Tony Gonzalez. 
God, it's so disheartening to hear how many players don't give a rip. I don't know if that's made my day or made it worse. Chris Broussard and Nick Ryder here tomorrow. For Christine, Tony, and everybody, this is The Herd. Number one, Villanova versus...